Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Avengers Endgame 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. And yes, finally Rescue has arrived. I personally am super excited to get her out here. This is a very unique and different take on an Iron Man suit of armor. So I am curious, how will she compare to the Mark 85 and of course the rest of the A-Force? Now if you are looking to pick her up, she is available and on sale right now with ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is of course down in the description below and they do have 12 month installment plans if you are a fan of paying off your figures over time. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here of course we have the box art for Rescue. It is done in a very similar style to the Mark VI War Machine and also the Iron Man Mark 85. It makes total sense. It's another figure in the diecast series. It does have this gorgeous metallic sheen all over the front of the box and you can see an image of Rescue herself. Now Technically, she is known as Rescue, but also as the Mark 49. More on that when we take a look at the figure herself later on in the video. As you can see, she is housed within a nice heavy duty black foam insert. You can even see an Avengers A logo plus an arc reactor on the side there. Now, without further ado, let's get her out here. Of course, she does have Rescue printed on the front of the styrofoam here, and as I said, it is very heavy duty, so fingers crossed there is no issues with the figure herself on the inside. And there we have her. I have not opened this prior to the review, so this is my very first time seeing her along with all of y'all. And I have to say, first in-hand impressions are, yep, that's a die-cast Iron Man figure. I can feel the cold metal, and she does look, first appearance-wise, fantastic. Fantastic. I am super impressed so far. She isn't the heaviest feeling diecast figure in the world, but we will determine how heavy she is compared to the Mark 85 later on in the video. Now you can see she does come with one tray up on top, and of course, just like the Mark 85 and other diecast figures, another tray down below. So what we are going to do now is get all of her accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything she comes with. Here we have all the bits and pieces that come with Rescue. Let's start off by taking a look at the display base first. It's the usual Avengers Endgame hexagonal style base. We do have an arc reactor in the center and a gorgeous high gloss Avengers A logo off to the side. And of course, to match the suit itself, it's done in this nice deep blue and gold color scheme, and it looks fantastic. Rescue, of course, is printed on the front there. We do get a dynamic waist clamp and flight pole to have her in mid-air, which I am tempted to do myself because if you want to make use of her single biggest accessory, you kind of have to have her in the air. Now, the first thing I'm going to say about this isn't overly positive. It's the fact that it feels incredibly flimsy. This entire thing is held together by this translucent plastic bracket. It is so incredibly thin that I'm worried about simply inserting this into the back of the figure. Budget Stark is commissioning someone to upgrade this mechanism and also install some LED lights in it because, spoiler alert, it does not light up. That being said, it still looks fantastic in hand. It does have some articulation, but even those articulated joints are done in translucent plastic, and just moving them here for the first time on camera, they're creaky, they feel like they are very, very fragile, so do be careful when you are using this drone pack piece to plug into her back. Now, of course, to do that, you do have this little piece right here. There is the slot that that connects to. It's incredibly thin and tiny. So once again, exercise a lot of caution. To go along with that piece, you of course get this blast, which, by the way, I really like. 
usually it's hit and miss when it comes to Hot Toys effect pieces, but this one, yeah, I'm all for it. It looks fantastic. It's a translucent blue plastic. It is a little bit softer, so you don't have to worry about spiking yourself when you are using this on display, but yeah, I'm super impressed with the way it looks and also the way it works with these little clips on the side. You can also see some subtle imprints there. Basically what you do is you take the hands and they perfectly slot into those pre-cut sections. It's a genius thing and it really does make it look nice and seamless. While we are looking at the hands, as you can see, there are two different styles. These are the repulsor blasting hands with the peg off at an angle, and these are the articulated ones. I personally always go with the articulated hands, but they do have those segmented joints, whereas these look a lot more, once again, nice and seamless. Of course, Rescue does have two different helmets. One that is the fully completed helmet, being this one right here, which will light up when you install the batteries on the inside. Don't worry, we will do that later on in the video. I have to say, I am loving this paint application. The gold is glossy and vibrant and very nice and rich. The gunmetal looks awesome as well, and so too does the purple. We also, though, get this helmeted head sculpt with the Pepper Potts likeness on the inside. Does it look like Gwyneth Paltrow? I personally think it does, but a lot of people have said that they aren't seeing the likeness. Let me know now that you're seeing it on video. Does this look like her, in your opinion? Because to me, yeah, it does. You also get this faceplate with some tech detail on the inside. You can, of course, have the faceplate closed on the helmet. There is a teeny tiny little lip on the bottom that you have to push in place and it'll click and be nice and sturdy and firm. Once it's on there, it is a little bit challenging to remove. The easiest way I found to do it is to wedge your finger in the side and then remove the front. If you are wondering how this head sculpt compares to the Iron Man 3 Pepper Potts, I think the likeness is stronger on the new one. And if you are wondering if this is compatible, the ball joint sizes in the neck are relatively similar. So we will be trying this head sculpt on the figure later on in the video. What we are going to do now though is get Rescue herself out here and take a closer look. And here we have her standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. She looks fantastic. There's no two ways about it. I'm super impressed with how seamless this thing looks. It comes together almost perfectly. Plus, on top of that, the paint applications are glorious. She's got this metallic flake throughout, and it pops under lighting. Then you add in the awesome LED features, which are dotted around the entire suit. You will see that later in the video. And the secondary head sculpt with the magnetic faceplate. This thing's a winner. I'm super impressed. I cannot wait to see what she looks like standing alongside the Mark 85 in the Avengers Endgame display. Because so far, yeah, I'm really impressed. What we are going to do now, though, is take her off the rotating turntable, punch in, and take a closer look at the details. And here we have her up close and personal. This suit in hand looks deceptively simple. Like there won't be a lot of articulation and there won't be many moving parts and pieces. If you're thinking that... That's where you'd be wrong, as you'll find out in just a second, because yeah, Hot Toys have crammed a ton of awesome engineering into this suit. But let's talk about the paint applications first, because they've done it again. This thing is gorgeous. You can see this beautiful metallic bluish purple type paint. It makes the entire thing look like it's made of metal, which is of course exactly what you'd want. She also has this awesome, rich, deep, vibrant gold that is also suitably metallic, and a couple of gunmetal and silver sections dotted throughout as well. What I'm trying to say is the paint applications are second to none. On the back you can also see the decals saying 49 and rescue. This 
basically bridges the gap between the Mark 47 and the 50 because 48 was the Hulkbuster 2.0 and 49 is Rescue and then we get to Mark 50. So technically Tony designed this suit before he designed the Mark 50. You can also see some little decals that have been applied. They are of course tampoed on, they're not actually stickers, but they do a nice job of adding a little bit more surface detail, including of course a Stark Industries logo on this gauntlet section. But yes, for the paint applications overall I'm super impressed. Now turning to the back, there is a ton of stuff going on in the backpack. You might initially think, well that looks like one solid hunk of plastic. That's where you'd be wrong. If you move up the inner flaps, as you can see there is some detail on the inside. The outer flaps also open up. But that's not all. These sections open up as well to create an absolutely massive chunky backpack out the back there with a bunch of opening flaps. And of course that gorgeous metallic silver is on the inside. And that's not all. There is even some detail on the underside of these panels right here. It's something that honestly I don't think they needed to do. They could have had these flaps stay down and just have these open. And I think most people would have been perfectly fine. But they didn't. They went the extra mile and made it look even more impressive. The cool thing about the flaps though is they open up and then they push inwards to seal the gap nicely because otherwise there'd be a ton of gapping here. But when you collapse it back up it looks almost entirely seamless. That might just be one of the most impressive engineering feats on this figure. It looks simple, just like the suit itself, but trust me, there are a ton of moving parts and pieces. There is also a section on the gauntlet which can move out of the way, so when you do have her doing a repulsor blast pose, this can nicely pop out of the way there. She also has this section up here, just below her arc reactor, that can pivot and move, and you'll see how that comes into play when it comes to articulation in just a second. But yeah, overall, as for the suit, it looks pretty much exactly like it did on film. I personally have no complaints whatsoever with the look of this figure. It might just be one of the most impressive die-cast Iron Man figures with how deceptively clean and simple it looks, but still packing in a ton of awesome engineering. For those wondering what she looks like with the lights on, here we have her. And I have to say, the lighting effect is pretty darn good. It always is, especially on these newer suits. There are mini arc reactors dotted around the entire thing, on the legs, on the torso, and even on the sides you have these little vents. Plus, up on the head you have some as well. Now it does look impressive in normal studio lighting, but turning the lights off is where this thing really shines. And as you can see, she is lit up a treat. There are a bunch of hidden sections that if you did have her in super harsh lighting, you probably wouldn't see, including the ones on the side of the head there, and also up here on the shoulders. This thing looks fantastic. Some people say that these Iron Man suits look like they are lit up like a Christmas tree, and yeah, they kind of are. Even on the back of the legs, you can see some lights. So overall, the lights themselves are really impressive. I just wish there was some universal power system that they had inside these suits, where you had to hit one button and it lit up the entire thing. Then you could go ahead and charge it with a USB-C cable. That way you wouldn't have to worry about those teeny tiny little batteries plus all of the teeny tiny little battery doors. I always find it interesting when Hot Toys throws in little easter eggs such as this removable chest plate. It's something that we never saw in the film and I'm pretty sure this would all be nanotech anyway, but as you can see you can remove the chest plate and there is a bunch of gorgeous detail on the inside. It's something they absolutely didn't have to do, but I'm glad they've continued to do it throughout the years, even on something like this. Now for potentially one of the weirdest head swaps that I have ever seen, here we have the Iron Man 3 Pepper Pot sculpt on the figure. And yeah, it simply doesn't work, it sits up far too high, and I think I know why. When you take a look at the helmeted sculpts, you can see this recessed area, where the underside of the helmet cups the top of 
of the neck, and it sort of hides a section of it. Whereas with the unhelmeted sculpt, you simply can't do that. Her jaw is nowhere near wide enough to accommodate that cupping method. So you have to sit it on top, and it looks like she's got an enormous giraffe neck. I don't think anyone will be displaying their rescue wearing this head sculpt. The only way around it that I personally can see is finding a human neck and swapping out this piece entirely. That way the head sculpt can sit a little bit lower and look potentially a hell of a lot better. Kicking off the side-by-side -side comparisons, here we have Rescue on the left and Mark 85 on the right. As you can see, she comes in at a relatively respectable height. She is still smaller than the Mark 85, but only just a bit. These two look gorgeous standing side by side. The metallics on both play off each other very nicely. They are a similar, very sleek design, especially in the abdomen with those sections coming in on the sides, but they are still very, very different. They do work really nicely together and I cannot wait to pop them in the display. As for a patented budget Stark style weight test, here we have the Mark 85. Popping him on the scales, you can see he comes in at 884 grams, a little shy of a kilo. Bringing in Rescue, she is quite a lot lighter at 521 grams. However, that is still relatively substantial. You can feel the weight of both of these figures when you get them in hand. You'll know you're holding something quality. Now this review wouldn't be complete without taking a look at the female cast and crew of the Avengers standing side by side, being of course the A-Force. I love this, they look awesome standing together. Honestly, I am tempted to kind of do an A-Force style display in the collection, if I can find the space. But for now, yeah, they look awesome. Rescue is the tallest, followed by Nebula, and it goes downwards from there. Not currently pictured is Black Widow because, of course, she had perished at the time of this scene and she is the smallest out of all of them. Honestly, yeah, I'm really impressed with how they look standing side by side. We will have to recreate this scene once more when the Avengers Endgame version of Captain Marvel comes out and hopefully one day we get a Valkyrie and also a Mantis. But for now, this is the completed set and yeah, it looks fantastic. Just going over articulation on Rescue. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Also, there are a ton of moving parts and pieces, so if I miss something, do let me know down in the comments below because I'm trying my best to highlight every single moving part here. Now, starting off with the head sculpt, this is actually a really unique design for the neck articulation. If you'll take a look, when we move the head upwards, the neck panels actually split and separate with one moving down at the back and the other one staying in place. That means you can pretty much get maximum range of motion out of the head and neck, but still maintain a really clean and simple look. That's what I've been going on about throughout the course of the video. Something as simple as a neck, they even have a moving part that can slide up and down. Completely unnecessary, but I'm glad they did it. That means you should be able to get the iconic ground pound pose where we see Pepper landing for the first time. You also have swivel and pivot side to side with the head, but the neck itself also moves around on a ball joint at the base. As for the arms, I recommend always pulling out the shoulder pads first, then moving them up. They are on a ball joint at the shoulder, and they swivel up and down, they can move forward and back, and they are on a pull out style joint, so you can get even more range of motion from those shoulders. But of course, you push the shoulder pads back down, and it looks completely seamless. There is a swivel at the bicep, a double bend there at the elbow, and of course a ball joint for the wrist. As for the torso, it can swivel, pivot, and crunch forward and back, but it is on a pull-out style joint to get an incredible range of motion going forward. It will get slightly gappy as you can see, but you simply push it back down into place and it looks seamless once again. 
As for the legs, just like the shoulders, move these panels out of the way first. There's one on the side and one on the front, and the legs go forward to about there until you extend them down. Then they can go up the full way, which is really impressive and required for the aforementioned ground pound pose, and they will go out to about there. They do have a swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend on super heavy duty ratchets at the knee there, a ball joint down here for the ankle, plus some toe articulation. Just going over the three cool and three annoying things with Rescue. The first annoying thing isn't the way this piece looks, but it's the way it attaches to the figure. It uses clear translucent pieces of plastic all throughout, and it pegs in on a very slim and flimsy piece. How could they have done it better? I'm not entirely sure, that's not my department. Hot Toys I'm sure could have figured something out, but this isn't the way of doing it, because as you can see, it's floppy, it's flimsy, it's fallen out on me a couple of times already, and I wouldn't be surprised when you'll get this thing in hand and you're trying to use this, that a lot of people start breaking those clear posts. The second annoying thing with Rescue is the super limited amount you can move the head side to side. That's due to the swooping nature of this helmet design that it bumps in to the edges. You can move it up or just swivel the neck entirely to get it to look a little bit more left and right, but I am worried that people will start to force the head and scratch up the neck. I do think they could have had a different style of joint in there that would have allowed a little bit more range of motion side to side. The third annoying thing isn't the inclusion of this head sculpt, I really like it, but it's the fact that they completely omitted the fully unhelmeted look. She does look like this for a couple of frames when she lands and the helmet opens up, then peels back entirely but I think they could have gone all out and given us a proper Pepper Potts head sculpt that people could have used to kitbash a Pepper in civilian clothing. I think I know why they did this though. You saw earlier on what this figure looks like with the regular head sculpt, it looks kind of goofy and weird. Granted, they could have gone with a separate neck, but that's a whole nother issue entirely. So for me, I understand why they did it this way, but still, I would have liked to have seen a brand new, fully sculpted hair version of Pepper Potts. The first cool thing is how seamless this suit looks. It does have some gaps here and there, I'm totally with you on that, but she does have a bunch of moving parts and pieces that you saw earlier that if I didn't tell you and you didn't already know much about the figure, you probably wouldn't have noticed. She also has the moving bicep pieces just like the 85 and the 50, which slide up to give you even more range of motion with the elbows. It's the little stuff like bits and pieces such as that and the moving neck panels that really show that Hot Toys we're going all out when it comes to rescue. The second cool thing is of course the gorgeous metallic purplish blue paint application. Under certain lights it looks more blue, under others it looks more purple. They've captured that very interesting ethereal kind of look that the paint did have in the film. So yeah, I'm super impressed with how this looks. The third cool thing is how you can combine the backpack drones and the blast effect. This looks fantastic. It might just be the way I display my rescue figure in the collection. The cool thing is none of this stuff is super heavy, so I don't think it's going to droop down over time because the joints are also really nice and sturdy. You do have to remove the drones from this translucent plastic section, they literally just detach there, but that means you won't have to use this thing, and therefore it will not break. So that definitely is a good thing. And as I said, this is a really impressive thing to see in person. Just wrapping up on the Avengers Endgame rescue figure. Now going into this I was already really excited because the Iron Man figures are Hot Toys bread and butter. They're die cast, they're really well articulated, the paint applications are always on point, and all of that stuff can be said with rescue here, except they've had to do it in a really sleek and slender format. And they've nailed it. I'm pleased to report that this might just be one of the most impressive die-cast Iron Man figures to date. A couple of people have said it's a little bit boring perhaps, it's very clean and very simple. 
Trust me, when you get this thing in hand, you'll see what I'm talking about. The paint glistens under light, it looks metallic, this thing feels hefty and sturdy in hand. There are a bunch of moving parts and pieces which I never even knew were going to move. She can pull off the ground pound pose no problem whatsoever. And even though the accessories are relatively light, the ones that she does come with, in my opinion, are fantastic. Now, as I said in the intro, if you are looking to pick this up, she is on sale now with ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is, of course, down in the description below, and they do have 12-month installment plans if you are a fan of paying off your figures over time. Also, while you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video. On me once before, as it is...